Welcome to part two of Totally Kick-Ass Burning and Dodging in Photoshop. If you haven't seen part one yet, go back and watch that first. Otherwise, you're going to be like, what the f is this f you're talking about? Otherwise, stick around and take your burning and dodging to the next level. Hey everybody, Josh Cripps here. You can join me on Facebook and Instagram at Joshua Cripps Photography. In part one of this video, we talked about dodging and burning on a 50% gray soft light layer, which is an amazing way to dodge and burn non-destructively, but it's got two problems as we saw. One, it can wash out your colors just like it's doing here. And two, if I actually look at my dodge burn layer, you can see that it's not very targeted. So now we're gonna learn a couple of easy techniques to deal with both of those issues. Uh, let me start over with a brand new fresh burn dodge layer. So whenever you um, paint with white on one of these burn dodge layers, whatever you're painting gets, oops, I'll take down the opacity a bit, gets lighter and lighter but because I'm painting with white, it also gets wider and wider, which gives it this kind of washed out look. So in order to fix that issue, instead of painting with white, what we're actually gonna do, make a new layer, is we're gonna paint with a color. And the best way to do this, generally speaking, is to grab a dominant color from the area that you want to dodge. For example, these nice orange clouds here. And uh, hold Alter Option while you're on the brush tool to select that as a color. And then go over here to your color picker and grab the brightest version of that color. The, the closer your color is to white, the more it'll dodge. And the closer it is to this extremely saturated color, the more color it will add. Usually somewhere in the middle is best, something like that. So now if I dodge on this same layer, what happens is things get brighter, but without getting that same white washed out look. So that's fantastic. However, you can see we still have the problem of dodging not being very targeted. It's sort of brightening everything indiscriminately. What if I just want to brighten the bright parts? Or what if I just want to darken the dark parts? Or say, for example, I want to brighten these trees without brightening anything else. Now, there are a lot of complicated ways to do this, but I'm going to show you a super simple one. Booyah! So first, uh, take your image and add a burn dodge layer, just like we saw how to do in the other video. Control or Command Shift N. Name it something clever like dodge and burn. Select, select soft light here and go ahead and check the fill with a neutral color. Now I've got that soft light layer. Now what you want to do is you want to add a layer mask and then, before you do anything else, go up here to Image, Apply Image. Now, what Photoshop does, um, and you don't have to worry about this. If the Invert box is checked, make sure that it's unchecked. Otherwise, keep all the default settings and click OK. What Photoshop actually does is it takes a black and white copy of this image and creates a layer mask. So this is the layer mask for what our Burn Dodge layer looks like. So basically, what we've done is uh, we're, we're, we've created this incredibly targeted mask. And as you guys know, when it comes to layer masks, white reveals and black conceals, which means that anywhere on this mask that's very light, such as these areas in the clouds, is very highly selected. And anywhere that's dark is almost not selected at all, which means that now we have an amazing way to dodge and burn exactly what we want. Let me turn that back off. So if you want to dodge these highlights here in the clouds just a little bit, well, you can do that. Make sure you're selected your dodge burn layer. And what you'll see happen is the highlights get brighter without increasing the brightness of the shadows. Now, if I turn off the layer mask, you can see this is what I actually, this horrible gaudy dodging is what I've done. But when I add that layer mask on there, you can see how it nicely targets that dodging to just the bright parts. Now what if we want to say for example, see how these trees are a little dark here? What if I want to brighten just those trees? How the heck do I do that? Because right now our mask is set up to brighten the bright parts, not brighten the dark parts. Well that's actually really easy. All we're going to do is we're going to make another 
burn dodge layer, which I have set up uh, an action on my computer to do automatically. I recommend uh, you guys look into how to do that. It's really, really convenient. So just hit a couple of buttons, create my new burn dodge layer. Now I'm gonna do the exact same thing. I'm gonna add a layer mask, and then I'm gonna go up here to image, apply image. Now this time what I'm gonna do is I am gonna check that invert checkbox. And this will create the selection not based on the brightest parts being most highly selected, but on the darkest parts being most highly selected. And if I look at what that layer mask looks like, looks like, you can see that, yes, indeed, the bright parts of the sky are nearly black, whereas the dark parts of the image are highly selected. So that means I can now, with my brush tool, dodge the shadows, and the shadows will get brighter without affecting the highlights. Now you can see that this is kind of ugly still. It's not very targeted. And the reason for that is if I look again at my layer mask, the trees are not clearly uh, delineated or separated from the mountains behind them. As you can see, here's the outline of the tree and here's the mountain behind it. I will only wanna dodge the tree. I really wanna bring those trees out and nothing else. So now I'm gonna show you guys uh, another really amazing trick that you can do to further refine and target these masks. With the mask itself visible, and the way you get that is by holding Alt or Option and clicking on the mask thumbnail, that brings up the mask, you can actually do curves adjustments on these masks. So if I hit Control or Command M, that brings up a curves adjustment. And one of my favorite things about curves adjustment is this little hand tool, it's the targeted adjustment tool, and this guy is your best friend. So remember, we wanna select the trees and nothing else. And the way that this little hand guy works is you click and drag up on the things you wanna select and you click and you drag down on the things you don't wanna select. So I don't wanna select these mountains in the background. So I'm gonna click and drag them down. And when I release, you see the mountains are getting dark. Now I do want the trees to be selected. So I'm gonna click and drag up on those. And that automatically refines this curves adjustment layer. And you can keep doing this more and more and more as much as you need to until those trees stand out, whoops, what did I just do? Incredibly from your background, something like this. So this is what our mask looked like before and this is what it looked like now after I did that refinement. And if I go ahead and go back to my burning and dodging, you can see that I've actually just dodging on the darkest parts of those trees. Now this is still way, way, way overkill because I was dodging very heavily just to make, a, make the point. So I'm gonna lower the opacity of that uh, a fair bit. And now I have a more subtle, but you can see how it really brings out the details in those shadows and just the shadows. We've gotten it to affect only the shadows and not the highlights or the midtones or anything else. So pretty amazing, pretty powerful, easy techniques that you can use to target your burning and dodging very, very selectively, how you can dodge without getting that washed out color. Uh, that, that's really all there is to it. Some tried and true easy techniques to b burn and dodge like a Photoshop ninja. So try not to cut anyone's arm off with your sweet katana skills. Now, if you would like to see the rest of my editing process on this image, um, this is my straight out of camera photo for this shot. And this is what it finally looks like after I've done all the Photoshop that I wanted to do on it. You can see I've done things like we talked about in the videos. I dodged this, this central area to draw your attention to it and to add some color. I did things like bring out the details of that mountain behind the trees. And I also added a lot of deep texture and contrast to these rocks and things in the foreground. So if you wanna see exactly how I did all of that editing to go from this straight out of camera shot to this final, uh, this final photo in its final form, you can do that by clicking anywhere here on the screen. That'll take you to the complete Photoshop walkthrough on my website. And that's it for this video. As always, you guys, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this and found it helpful, please share it with your friends, give it a thumbs up, and you can subscribe to this channel, Professional Photography Tips, the absolute best place on YouTube to become a better photographer. You can also join our Facebook group and newsletter to get photo critique and processing help. Until next time, have fun and happy shooting.